Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. You join me on the beginnings of my project to convert all of these bits and pieces into basically a bench mount piece of test equipment. And that's, of course, the component to VGA converter with adjustamentes. So the first thing to do in this project is to remove all of the pieces from this board that I kind of don't want on this board anymore. And I'll just show you which they are. That's the variable resistors here. And that's because, of course, we're going to be using our pots instead. These are 500K, uh, sorry, 500 ohm resistors. And I believe our potentiometers are 1K or thereabouts. So not too bad, we can, we can work with that. So what we're going to be doing is unsoldering those. And in addition to those, we're going to unsolder these tack switches because it happens that I don't have tack switches and I kind of feel that I'm going to be able to do something with this panel. These aren't really functions you need to use that much. And initially I was thinking of putting a, a D sub connector and just using an, like an Atari ST or Mega Drive controller to operate these. So they're so infrequent, but I kind of think I'll use one of these generic PCBs and just sort of pull off those buttons, mount them here and just drill four little holes on the case and just hot glue that on. So we've got you know, remote control for that. So those are the ones I got to start with. And all you're going to need if you're going to do that really is your solder sucker because they're all through hole components. So we'll start with those small potentiometers or variable resistors if you prefer to call them that. Let's just get in there. And we've got my new soldering tip, which is still kind of looking pretty new. Credit where credit's due. What we're going to have to do as well at some point is to buzz out this, these components, see where they're located, because we might have to... Basically, because we're adding them elsewhere, put a jumper across these. So I'm just turning up my soldering iron because I need that extra bit of heat. It's, this board is sinking heat like mad. So you might even need flux. If you've got some flux, definitely use it. And you can see that's working pretty well with just the addition of a tiny, tiny bit of flux. And hopefully, with a little bit of wiggle, you'll be able to pop those out from the other side. So all the things we're doing here, though, nothing is irreversible. Just remember that. If you really want to go back to your default configuration, you can. The GBS boards, though, are pretty cheap. I suspect a lot of you, if you make something like this, you wouldn't probably necessarily want to go back. And you're probably questioning, why am I bothering to make one of these? Well. That is a good question, and the answer is, basically, recently I was working on a jammer board, and that was um, Stuart Ashen's WrestleFest, of all things, and it was just doing all these weird sort of things with the video, and I was using the his super gun, and it sort of transpired after that that maybe the signals might not be optimal. And I kind of thought, well, if I had more adjustment when I was testing, I'd have been able to sort of work stuff out or play with it a little bit. And of course, um, I didn't, I wasn't able to. His super gun was also using one of these. I think it might have been a version five unit. So as a basis for a project, these boards are so cheap. It's definitely worth using them. And I thought, well, why not? We, can, we get all these um, bits and pieces off eBay now, all of these bench um, enclosures and stuff like that. So let's just try to make something half decent. And you know, even we could even, if, if necessary, put a tiny bit of mass in the bottom, weight it down a bit if it's not weighty enough, make a, a nice bit of test uh, equipment. So you can see here, I'm basically, I'm not treating this PCB very nicely because I'm, I'm applying heat from the top and just pushing the legs through. And it would make an awful mess of this. I wouldn't advise you do anything like this if you were doing it on a, um, you know, a nice piece of retro equipment. 
But on this, it's it's pretty simple circuit, and I'm just I know I'm not really that bothered about it. I'm, I I can uh, I'm not damaging anything because I don't intend to put anything back through these through holes. <clears throat> and we just got one more. And we're going to poke that through. And then we're going to move on to the tack switches. And there are plenty of tack switches. By Jove are there tack switches. Something about through hole tack switches I don't like. I tend to not use them because they're so annoying. Now interesting enough, I do have there's a lot of conversation recently about solder suckers, and I do have one of those fancy pants solder suckers. I certainly could be using one of those now in this. Maybe I should be. Right, so let's get rid of that and let's get on to the tack switches. Right, we've got a couple off already. I've tried to work out which technique is best for this, so hopefully I've got it pat down now. So what I tend to do, what I'm trying at the moment, is to put solder in from the top. And if your solder tip is wide enough, I'm trying to actually heat two pads at once. It seems to be kind of working. I'm going to do it at a bit of a weird angle so that you can see what I'm up to. Um, but basically, I'm trying to heat those two pads right there, for example whilst you can see my fingers on top though um, levering the pad you see there you go leave it open and then do the same on the other side but that seems to work well I mean I think that's that's a pretty valid technique for getting off the tack switches at least they still click and remain tacky when you're done I did persevere with the solder sucker and stuff but that was that was a mugs game, don't bother with that. They will never want to go with that. I think it's because they've got quite thin legs and they're kind of angled. They've got like a bit of a weird spring steel leg or something. Yeah, yeah, touch the two. They like that. There we go. All done. If you see these connections here, those were the three pots that we've taken out and they do need to be connected electrically so they're bypassed and that's from connecting here to here so you don't need these these are basically ground these would be the giving you the potential divider taking them to ground we don't need that so we're just gonna go from here to here here to here here to here but you'll see here i have dashed the track a bit i was a bit overzealous and you can see we have got a bit of a damaged track there in fact maybe there's a bit there too but i'll work that out what I think these, oh, there's a via there. Huh. That's a via, and then the, my track that's ripped would go to here. So I'm gonna put a little wire from here just to there. You can see they're just jumping up straight into this two resistors, R56. You could actually do that for all of them if you want to, but these two are easy, they're not damaged. Just bridge, bridge, and here I'm gonna go bridge to there. So you can see I've already joined two of those now, just using a bit of old resistor leg, something I'd line around on the bench, but this one, really requires something a little bit more with a bit more finesse and that's some kynar so we've got one end done there you can see it's bonded pretty good it's pretty good it's pretty darn good and then we're just going to bend that over we're going to attach it to the edge of that service mount resistor right there see it see it right there see it see it right there of course you do because you've got good eyesight not like me. Bang! Jobs are good. See if the camera can focus on that a little bit closer. Yeah. That looks fine to me. Now, if you're going to deal with the switches, well, I'm not going to mess with it right now because I don't have uh, necessarily the wire and I'm not sure what I want to do with it. But just to show you how the tack switches work, you can see here this these lines coming in. That one, that one, and that one, and that one. They're basically just getting shorted to ground. So when you're pushing the button down, they're getting shorted to ground and then it's activating one of these four things, which is up, menu, down, or I guess auto, however these are labeled up. Now what you'll notice is, if you remember here, we had a ground here as well. So we can do a shared ground from here and here on our little board, whatever's going to our front panel. And those can act as the ground reference for all of these things. So that's all good in the hood. So we don't really have to worry about that. 
Bear in mind, of course, if you remove these pots here, you will affect your ability to affect these. Now, one other option you could have had, of course, is to wind the pots all the way over into one direction, which I think would have been good. I think that would have been a way of doing it and you still get to keep the pots. But let's just have a quick check just to make sure. For me, like now in you know hindsight, after I've done it, I'm thinking, yeah, that wasn't very bright. Um, but there you go, that's the way. Sometimes your mind doesn't quite work. And you're gonna need, I'm just looking for a little screwdriver. So if you've got these uh, little pots, you're gonna need a little screwdriver. that will just zoom in a bit here so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna wind them all the way to one direction there. And I'm gonna put it on its back. And we're going to measure the resistance of that. In fact, I'm probably going to just hold it in my hand. And there you go. So the resistance is the 500 ohms. It did say on it, 500. And if we round it back all the other direction where we don't want it to interfere, 0.4 ohms. So you didn't really have to take those off um, if you've done that. So up to you, really, if you take them off or not. Uh, I guess I guess it depends how you want to wire them to be honest with you um, like for example I've jumpered these here and that's with the idea of just putting the pots in line with the inputs before they get here but actually you, <laughs> I could have maybe in my mind initially I was going to remove these and wire the pots so that they go into that part of the PCB it's it's Look, six of one, half a dozen of the other. You've got loads of options on this, just do it. I've got my MSX next to me now and I've applied power to this board and VGA output to a TV and it all works. So there's really not much to do on this end at the moment. Um, although actually, to be honest, the MSX signal was looking a bit high and I suspect that's because of, of course, those resistors I've taken out. So what I thought though, really, once you get to this point, you're almost at the kind of mounting the hardware to the front panel. Because I thought, okay, I could test everything out on the bench and then fit it to the panel. But then I thought, well, that's just doubling everything. Either you're going to do it or you're not. So either you're going to go big or you're going to go home. And we're just going to go big and continue. That's my, my aim here. So I need to put these tack switches on some PCB. I, I was going to use that other little board, but it wasn't quite right for these. This is a bit better. A bit of Vera board. Now, looking here, you've got to just work out which pairs make contact. I kind of think, yeah, it's the wide ways, if that makes any sense to you. Have a look here. If you want something to make contact, it's these pair. Yeah, so the two sort of flat pairs will do it. We'll just double check that. Let's switch. Yep, so those are the two pairs. You want to make sure when you push it through, you want them on two separate tracks. So you mount it that away, basically, that away. So we need to just get a little pattern here. We want our four. So yeah, I think this is quite a quick project, really, if you just want to do a quick, quick job of it. Now, looking at the interwebs about the GBS boards, there are a bunch of mods you can make to the boards themselves to improve various issues that they have regarding noise and such. Um, I suspect you could do those anytime. I would, I would probably just build your main kit first and then optimize it. See how it all, you know, fares once it's in there. You might find you've got issues with noise and things like that you've introduced as well that you might need to remove. So start though with I think a basic configuration and take it from there really. So that's a couple in there. Do I want to see? That probably is about as close as you can get them really. So here is the end result. You can see I've kind of tried to tidy up the board a bit. So all you need to do for each switch you see I've, I've made a cut through the board here right in the middle. So that's separating the two switches that are actually in line with each other but basically you've got um, two pairs each so you've got uh, one switch here you've got the other switch here you've got one switch here and you've got another switch down here so you can take it off from those two points or from here and here so what you can do because it's all common grounded 
you can work out a way where you want to ground a bunch of them. So for me, I would say ground those two there and ground those two there and then just join that to that and then that's your common ground. So we'll wire that up though in some sort of way in the moment. Now, before we do, just want to show you as well, this is the panel we're going to be using. So we want to mount that on there somehow. You've got to decide, a lot of things have to fit on here. So we've got to decide how we want to do it. But I'm thinking like, you know, shove it in the corner somewhere. We can make that PCB a bit slimmer if we want to get it right into the corner. But I think that's probably not too bad. And uh, I'm probably going to cheat. I'm probably going to put a bit of paint or something on the end of these. And I'm going to take this and then just press it like that gently. So I have four dots and then I'm just going to run a drill through them. It's, it's not, I'm, you know, I'm really, this is not a fantastic high tolerance piece of bench equipment I'm making here. This is just me making it using quick and dirty tools like everybody's got at home to be, you know, better than messing with this on your desk where you want something um, a bit decent, something we can work with and do projects with. So don't worry about it if you do one and, you know, the, screw, the drill hole is slightly wonk or whatever. I mean, it's nice to take your time. And everything else you can do with a ruler and measure for all of these other components. This one's the only one that's going to be a little bit more guessy. But I think if you line it up nicely by eye, do your little paint trick and make sure they're all nice and even, you could do that. Or, you know, you could measure these into the center and do that. But I think just do it from the switches themselves. And looking at it, they're just about thick enough that they, they're not going to do a massive protrusion. This is more like an end of a ball pen type adjustment. Um, now if you want it to be a little bit more responsive in terms of your finger press, you can get these with much longer ends on it. So, you know, look out for them if you want that. Just get the ones which are longer. I mean, you can get them as long as you like virtually. But I think looking at this board, they're going to protrude just like a kind of half a mil. So you will be able to just, just about probably do it with the tip of your finger. Let's see. Right, next stages for me then are probably, just undo this, probably just thinking about how to mount all this stuff. So I'm probably going to just do a quick mock-up. Well, let's just do it now. I'm just going to take out our screws. So we've got these screws with the feet on them. We don't want to lose those, keep them safe. Though, remember, those feet are hard plastic. So there's maybe a lot of sliding around the deck if you've got those in. So this is the project box, and I'm going to mark it out because it is quite um, tricky. But this way is the front. You can tell it's also got two channels because you could have a PCB behind the front panel, which we're not going to have in our design. So we're going to plop this in there basically and we know that all the wires we've got are going to be soldered from the top a bit like this so we can push that right up to an edge we're not using any of those ports so we've got a vga to go so we can plug that in and we do have a power so the power jack's fine we can just clip that anywhere so automatically you're seeing it kind of wants to rest a little bit like that um which Let's see, is there any screw holes it mounts up with? So it matches up with one of those. Uh, yeah, that's not so good. I suspect we're not really going to match up with many of these at all. No. I mean, it's nice to get one in at least, doesn't it? It saves on the bit of hot glue for us. But let's be realistic. If we cut away the excess material on this strain release, so we can get kind of a 90 degree bend on this VGA, or if you could get a 90 degree bend VJ adapter that could be cool because you could just plug that in like so and then on the back just plug that in I mean that that would work really well um, but I don't have one of those so I'm just probably going to cut this out so I can get a dog leg on it maybe I will do it that way as well so I just have a bit more opportunity for this to arc around I mean I could see it putting a bit of pressure on the case um, and you can see those are the main holes coming in there. This PCB actually has to be behind those, so it's going to be pretty tight. So I probably will have to do something to stop it touching the side of the case. But you can see there, actually, just a cable tie there is enough. And that gives me plenty of opportunity now to mount that wherever I want. Power is easy. Um, and I can put this fairly, set it fairly close to the uh, back panel. So I'm going to put in where the back panel would be, something like that there. Um, 
then that just gives loads of room for working out how everything else is going to touch the front. So if you can imagine, if you've got the front panel in here, the deepest things you have really are going to be your potentiometers and your doohickeys, your phonos. So really, you've got loads of room here. There's going to be plenty of gap behind that for working everything out. Ooh, I can just, just sort of admiring these aluminium knobs here. Now when you get these, by the way, you get a selection of knob materials. But this is a plastic core with a nice aluminium on there. It comes anodized in any colour you like. Mmm, metally. I've been having a play laying this out now, so I kind of think this is kind of where I'm going to be going with it. So you've got your tack switches. Imagine this is flipped, by the way, and all of these the other way around, so they're poking through the front. So you've got near the tack switch, you've got the volume control, and it's a different pot. It's got actually two, two pots on it. You can see it's got double there. There's one and two rows of pins for that one. So it's stereo. I'm not sure how we're going to deal with that yet. And then you've got your ground, sync, blue, green and red. So it's red, green, blue, sync, if you look at it from the other way. Um, and then your four pots, which are controlling the red, green, blue and sync. And it would be nice to line them up, but I don't know. I think it's a bit tight if I start doing that. And it's like, why? Why worry about it? You'll know what you're adjusting with it. You won't be going, oh, I'm adjusting the ground. Um, so there is an interesting thing. If you look at these cables, I was thinking about this and I was thinking, hang on, why do we have a ground lug and what was it you know what was going on in my mind when I was specking out these pieces like you know a month ago remember I order these from China so it takes time to arrive and um, I started looking at this and I started buzzing them out yeah you see the outer parts of these phonos they don't actually connect to anything so these are actually floating so on this cable it's only the centers are actually hooked up which is really weird the earth for example, the ground doesn't even hook up to this part of the shell. It just hooks up to the pin on there. So I guess that's where I'm going with it. So I don't know if I actually even need these tags on here. So I might just be totally ignoring those. And the audio, of course, is different. Audio will be using one. So it's, it's kind of tricky, really, because if you imagine you have these tags, um, I guess you kind of don't want to hook them up to be the same potential. I, 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 really, I really don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'll leave them floating. So I'm probably going to take them, I'm probably going to not bother hooking these up, these terminals. I'll just show you what they look like. Um, and put them in a box somewhere. <laughs> or I'll hook them up, I'll just leave them floating and uh, just in case I need to use them in the future. But yeah, it's just basically some ring terminals where you can solder onto. But yeah, it's a bit of a weird one actually. It's, it's funny when you start thinking about these things. I don't think you need them. That's my gut feeling and it's better not to hook them up because... If you're using a cable where those things are kind of hooked up, you might have a weird effect or some sort of weird ground loop thing going on that's unintentional. It's almost the sort of thing that you'd want if you're going to have it, that you could operate it by a switch just to sort of be able to switch between these different things. But I think this makes this makes sense. And if you look here, these are quite nice in that. Also, I managed to get red, green, blue, uh, a yellow for the sync which is the white here in this case and the black so I think that all works out again it was weird I just did notice um, that I didn't manage to get hold of a yellow one but I don't think there's a problem with that so I'm going to try to mark this out a little bit more clearly with a ruler or something and then we'll just blat it out with a drill really it's not there's no rocket science there I might just have one last little fiddle Ooh, these can line up, but then again, does that make them a bit too... I think that makes them a bit too difficult to twiddle then. I don't know, I don't rightly know.
I've had a lot of fun and games marking this up. I have to admit, I was a little bit disappointed about how warped these end panels are. Look at this. So I'm not too bothered if I mess it up, frankly, because we can get plenty of materials to replace this. Normally I use metal. I like to use a black, um, a piece of um, an aluminium that's been black anodized because then I can use a laser cutter to engrave the uh, features. I also have the T8 uh, milling machine, but you have to use a very soft material for that if you're gonna use a metal. But you could use an acrylic, something like this would be very nicely machined with a T8. So just looking at it now, um, I have missed one thing though, haven't I? I don't have <laughs> my ground, but I'm just gonna go and add my ground and then I'm gonna drill these all out. I briefly considered doing this on the drill press, but really <laughs> in this material, you don't need to worry about that. So I'm gonna go, let's see, should we go two mil? I'm gonna go two mil as for pilot holes if that'll fit in my drill. Yes, it does. I've just got this wee bit of wood, wee bit of wood, nothing too complicated. And uh, this is the one that's that tricky bit, by the way, and it's not actually ink. So I'm going to try to be careful because it, I'm trying to, it's not ink, it's not dry. So I'm going to need to go right in the center for these if I can. Yep, that was pretty much not center. That one was better. Center enough. Oh, well, it's done now. Rock for wrong or for right, that is done now. And it's just wipe that off, that sort of graphite and Vaseline type stuff. Woohoo! So, hopefully, they're going to match up. Just going to make those a bit bigger at some point. Right, just going to battle on with the rest of them. Well, for better or for worse, that's all our holes in now. So we can work our way from the front now while our pilots are there. So I'm just going to open these out. I think they're about three and a half mil. They look a bit three and a half mil. I'm going to go with four. And hopefully I wasn't too far wrong. Or else I'm going to have a date with a file. Get all that swarf. Swarf and electronics, eh, on the same bench. Ooh, there you go, look at that. Look at that bad boy. What did I say about the protrusion, right? It's so fine. It's definitely doable, though. It is doable by finger. Nice. Nice. Gonna have to be careful though not to overcook these though. You don't want them to bind up. So I don't know. Almost tempted to take that out to a five, really. Well, four and a half, shall we say? What do you reckon? Yeah, come on, four and a half. It is. Okay, we are all drilled out now. So interestingly, the pots need a seven millimeter hole, whereas the phonos need an eight. So. Make sure you've got a few sizes in your toolbox. Now, it's up to you how you want to trim them. If you've got a countersinking bit, you could probably just run it along the edge of these, or uh, you can ignore these, it's up to you. Um, <laughs> I'm sure once we compress those locking um, nuts, these things will get pushed in, this little bit of sort of swarfy stuff on there, but I don't know, I'm taking the extra time just to clean up some of the worst offenders here with me scalpel. But this plastic is nasty. So I guess this is what, um, I quite like this as a project box because it was so cheap, but you can see what you get. It is it is um, made to a price. And you do know those sort of lab type project boxes are expensive, um, but they're made to a pretty good tolerance. It really depends what you're doing. I mean, at this price for these, you could pretty much make a decent attempt, you know, like a decent box for every project, really, which is quite nice, really. It's better than just having some bit of electronics slung around somewhere. So that I think that's good enough. Now, um, the decision though to ream those out slightly larger, I'm like now in two minds about it. I think it's a bit too roomy, but 
to be honest we're splitting hairs here <laughs> let's not worry about that so what I need to do is basically take all of the mounting hardware from these things and pop them in the right hole but just want to check things like this you see could be quite tricky to solder later so I just want to make sure now nah, be that'll be fine I'll be able to do that so I want to make sure you'll be able to solder them after just double check because your hardware may be different so if you've bought a potentiometer from somewhere else rather than flea bay or wherever i've got this um your mileage of course may vary alibaba's got some good stuff you might be able to get some uh, good cheap components alibaba i'm using a pliers here don't use a pliers if you slip you're going to make a mess so that's that mounted quite nicely let's have a look what it looks like with the old knob now if you've got your knob <laughs> before you play with your knob turn this and look at where that's aligned and then see how far it aligns i'll tell you why because you kind of want to know if you look at the knob there it's got a marking on there you kind of want to see where it's going to end up so i think i could bring that in just a tiny bit i mean to be honest it's pretty minor isn't it if you think about it in the whole scheme of things you can play with that after but that's close enough you want to know where you are in the middle and where you are in the end in case you want to print something which has some delineations on there so that's the uh, knob action and of course this is a audio so it's going to have a left and a right and we're going to go red for right it's always red for right isn't it someone's going to go no it's not you're wrong andrew you always get that wrong it's not red for right definitely and because it is an audio you will want that tag in there so that's good in nerve i don't know this thing looks a little bit musty crusty i've had to reuse um sort of pinch basically one of these rings from the uh one of the other ones because i only had only came with basically i only ordered one red where i should have got two and uh the issue is it's got two of these red rings one is a, a sort of a mounting quality one and then one's a sort of just retaining quality one so this is just a, a retaining quality one it's not quite as pretty to be honest with you i think that's that's going to be more than uh, adequate for our needs so let's put our strap back on and our hardware on the back you can see it's black because that's the one i pinched it from it is fine it's fine so we've got a bit of room here because if you think of our pcb just there so you're just gonna decide where you want to put that probably depends how we're gonna wire up our volume pot anyway doesn't matter it's pretty movable let's keep it in the vicinity and then you just go around tighten that up as best you can what's interesting though it does come with two nuts so you could put a nut on each side depending on your application i mean i don't know what to do with the second nut so i'm just going to pop it on there i think um i guess the way you're supposed to do it right looking at this do is potentially uh to take that lot that thing i don't know what we want to calling that the um that lug crikey how can the ring terminal jeez what's wrong with me today you're going to take that ring terminal and you should really bind it between two nuts so i'm going to do that now because i'll get hate mail for not doing that correctly you did not do that right that makes a lot more sense doesn't it because that way then you can mess with that ring terminal without having to dismantle the whole thing from your panel and then you got your ring terminal there i think that's like okay isn't it is that all right guys please write in the comments down below cursing me to hades with that so there that's one lot done now just a billion to go i've been a busy bee look at that doesn't it look snazzy i'm actually quite pleased with this I kind of think if you imagine this is in the enclosure and this is the base but i'm going to put it as if it's the lid upside down but ooh, it's looking pretty darn good and it fits really well i mean even the buttons though you can hear them clicking away they are although look i'll just show you why there's an old though on those buttons i've kind of basically hot snotted them in i've glue gun glued them in because i couldn't think of really any other way that was nice but you know it's fine that looks pretty good i mean that's not bad at all so i'm really pleased with this stage so 
I'm going to put this down, go and have a little night's rest, and I think tomorrow will be the day that I'll finish this off. Now I was looking at there is some sort of there's a bit of a gap here in this corner, so I do think there is opportunity for maybe a power LED could be not quite nice there. Maybe a power switch. I don't know. Now I think maybe a label here saying what this is, and maybe a power LED, and I think a switch might live on the back. Anyway, who knows? I mean. This is on my bench, everything's controlled from one main socket, but we'll work something out. Let's leave that, and I shall see you back here in the morning. Mm -hmm.